Good Saturday evening, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a quick look at what's going on with the forecast. Still a few thunderstorms winding up around the area as we go into the early evening hours. And again, hopefully not looking at anything severe, but we will be keeping a very close eye on that throughout the rest of the evening hours. So please keep it tuned to News Channel 3, and we'll keep you advised on that. Coming up in just a little bit, this is the last day of June 2018, and it's a very good possibility that the first day of July starting tomorrow is going to be almost equally as hot and again continuing again to see the potential for some pretty steamy conditions over the course of the next several days. So if you're looking for any cooler weather, Alaska may not be such a bad idea or a few other places out there. If you're just shoot, uh, tuning in from around the area, thank you very much for joining us. Make certain you drop your location and your, any weather reports you've got from around the area into the comments section. Let's see where you're from, city and state, things like that. And then also, again, giving us an idea for temperature. If you got rain today, give us a rain gauge amount, wind speed, wind direction. If you got some sunset shots, stay tuned. We'll show you a couple of our webcams coming up in just a little bit to show you what it looks like out there and some spectacular sunsets going on at this time. So more on that in just a little while. And of course, we'll take a look at more about the heat and humidity, which is going to be just about as bad tomorrow as it was today with more advisories issued by the National Weather Service service, so stay tuned for more on that. If you're just tuning in, Again, for tonight, we've got a lot to talk about, so stick around for a lot more here. And, of course, coming up on News Channel 3 at 10. Temperature trend over the next several hours, again, dropping into the mid to upper 70s, but not really seeing a lot of anything in the way of cooler weather anytime soon. Tom Condra, hope I'm saying that right, from Dallas, Texas. The Big D, welcome from 93 degrees at this point in time. Thank you very much for checking in from uh, back and around northern Texas. Rest of the evening, again, temperatures back into the mid to upper 70s, to the lower 80s as we go to the next several hours, and this is going to be about as cool as it gets into tomorrow morning. Chances of showers and thunderstorms, again, probably should not be lasting much through about News Channel 3 at 10, maybe around midnight, if that, and then partly cloudy to mostly clear as we head into tomorrow morning. So again, we could be looking at some uh, more heat and humidity out there with no problem at all. Amy Hayes from St. Louis, uh, say hello to my good friends. Steve and Judy Newell up there, and best wishes to Judy to get better as she suffered a bit of an accident rollerblading, getting ready for hockey season, and she's now confined to the couch, so uh, hopefully Judy's doing a little bit better up there in St. Louis. Thank you very much for that. William Skage, hope I'm saying that right, 92 in the lower peninsula of Michigan. Heat index close to 100 degrees. Sounds pretty similar to what we have here. Thank you very much for that. Vicki Franks Rose in Savannah, Tennessee, 100 degrees asking for the century mark. Be careful what you ask for. You never can tell when that might show up out there. City Hall cam from Germantown, just starting sunset. Again, very much on the humid side, so looking a little hazy out there for right now. 81 degrees, a little cooler, thanks in part to some showers that came on through, dropping the temperatures a little bit. These numbers are much more comfortable than what we've seen out there over the course of the last couple of days, and those winds picking up a little bit too out of the south at about 13 miles per hour, helping to stir things along by just a bit, maybe cooling things off by a while too. A little bit of some very nice sunset pictures. Again, a very nice view into and around the area of Oxford, Mississippi from the track and field facility. Sunlight in the cloud cover reflected back quite nicely there and a few joggers and strollers out from time to time in and around the area for there. Golfers wrapping up at sunset around Windy Country Club on Winchester. Not too many people out and about, just the grounds crew out there for now. And here's what it looks like, a live picture from one of our Technically brand new cameras, been around for a while, but it's been the latest one we've had installed for just a little bit. Sunset taking place around Shelby Farms Park, Hyde Lake, and the traffic of Farm Road going off there in the distance, looking out toward the west-northwest. And again, a few clouds drifting on through, but not showing anything in the way of a lot of rain or thunderstorms right now. If you've got pictures, stay tuned. We'll show you some of the ones that got sent in to us and where you can send your pictures so we can feature them on netcasts like this. So stay tuned for more on that coming up in just a little while. Storm Tracker 3S radar. The showers and thunderstorms from earlier today are shadows of their former selves. There's really just not that much going in to and around the area out there. In eastern Arkansas, had some thunderstorms between Jonesboro and I-40. Not that much going on right now. And then what's left of some of those thunderstorms, mainly across the Mississippi Delta from Tunica, 
Helena down toward Clarksdale. These thunderstorms, you may notice some of them are kind of heading this way, some going that way, some going this way. There's no real major amounts of wind to push these things through like a giant cold front coming on through the area. So what we've got is these thunderstorms going this way and that way and this way and all over the place. So they don't really have any major direction. So they're going to wander across much of the area. They'll develop, drift, collapse, and then start back all over again. And that collapsing motion in the atmosphere actually does a pretty good job of stirring up more thunderstorms. And if you'd like to see more about that, head to my social media pages. The National Weather Service has a great loop from the terminal radar in northern Mississippi showing that pulsation in the atmosphere. Really cool to take a look at and I'll be featuring that on my Facebook page as well and you can get that information down in the blue bar at the bottom of your screen. Take a look there. This is about all that's left. Again, maybe a couple more thunderstorms out there just past sunset but really just not that much left of that. Here's the important information to pass along. The heat and humidity is going to be sticking around for another day. This was supposed to come to an end at 8 o'clock tonight. National Weather Service has now extended the time frame on this, so it now goes through Sunday at 8 p.m. In the orange-shaded counties, that's again a heat advisory, which is issued again for temperatures on the heat index scale of about 105 degrees. That's what it feels like out there when you combine the temperature and the humidity to get that feels-like heat index. For those of you who want to be really persnickety, and argumentative, yes, it is a thing. No, it is not made up for ratings. There, I said it. I feel better now. So there you go. And if you'd like to know more about it, National Weather Service has the complete formula. You can look up and calculate the numbers on your own if you'd like to do that. But don't waste my time by telling me it's not real. It's a thing. Now, here is, again, the hot conditions out there. The excessive heat warning has now been extended to include areas down to around Coahoma, back into Phillips County, Arkansas, and back to around the Boot Hill in northeast Arkansas. This is an excessive heat warning. The hottest of the hot conditions will be in this area. The main reason this is issued is, again, for human safety. If you're going to be outdoors working or exercising tomorrow, especially at the peak heating times of the day between roughly about noon and 6 p.m., you may be taking your life into your hands if you don't know how to take breaks, drink back the water, your body sweats away, things like that. So if you have plans for outdoor yard work or exercise, right around sunrise and again after sunset will be your best bet because then at least you don't have the sunlight blaring down on you and trying to overheat you that direction as well. So something to think about there just to be uh, on the same side out to and around the area. Uh, Lisa Clayton Gomez, high temps in Memphis, nothing new. That's true. This is all pretty much old hat, but we still have to make certain people know about it for safety's sake out there. Welcome to everybody who's tuning in across the Mid-South area. Amy Hayes, rain today while the sun was out, just made it hotter and didn't see a rainbow. Yeah, not exactly the best combination out there. Thank you from uh, that one. Leanne Adams, no rain to report. Some thunder, though. Thank you very much uh, for that one. Mark Berry, let's talk about snow. There's a good idea. I'll have to see if I can find some snow cameras out there. Uh, at some point in time. Temperatures right now, again, the heat and the humidity together is causing some pretty stifling conditions out there. And Crestview Middle School in Covington, I got to admit, this is one of the steamier numbers that we've seen out there for a while. It's right around sunset. Sun's about ready to go below the horizon. And with the humidity out there, it still feels like 108 degrees in Covington. And that's one of the hottest ones out there. Now, everybody else picking up some lesser amounts of humidity, not by much. But again, that's what's helping to bump those numbers up. And with these numbers out there tomorrow, it's going to be about the same thing out there. If you'd like to get this information on your computer, go to the weather bug section of wreg.com slash weather, and you can get all of this on your computer system if you'd like to know a little bit more about what's going on out there. Okay, running the numbers into the rest of the evening. Temperatures as we go into about News Channel 3 at 10, mid to upper 70s to lower 80s or so. And as we go into tomorrow morning, Chances of showers and thunderstorms start to reappear after sunrise. I really don't think we're going to see that much into the area past about midnight and through about daybreak tomorrow. But then afterwards, we start to see that potential of showers and thunderstorms stick around and get a little bit more widespread off and on as we go into around Sunday afternoon. And yes, once again, we're looking at some pretty steamy conditions out there back into the lower to mid 90s for high temperatures. So we're going to be seeing that throughout the foreseeable future. Seven-day forecast, again, nothing really new here. 
hot every single day, not cool at night, and those chances of showers and thunderstorms just continuing onwards throughout the next several days. And that continues again throughout the first full week of July. We're just not seeing a lot of change out there. Now, for the Independence Day holiday, so far most of the day looks okay. But as we go toward evening, there could be some natural fireworks to offset the human-made fireworks, or at least postpone them by a little bit. It does not, at this time, look like it's going to be a washout. But again, with those thunderstorms around, picnics, parades, outdoor activities, sneaking in that, that uh, quick golf game, taking a dip at the pool, whatever you've got. Again, remember, if you can see lightning or hear thunder, it's time to clear out and get indoors and make certain that storm either dissipates or moves uh, far enough away from you in 30 minutes that you are safe. Remember that lightning can strike 20 to 30 miles away from a parent thunderstorm. So you could have a thunderstorm over Collierville and be in downtown Memphis and still get hit by that lightning bolt from that storm that's on the east side of the county. That's why you have to be careful. That's why the National Weather Service has National Lightning Safety Awareness Week that just came to an end today. And again, that was in effect to make sure everybody out there knows more about lightning safety. Any hope for any cooler weather anytime soon. On daybreak, we looked for some late into the period of the forecast and saw maybe a bit of a downturn toward the middle of next week, second week of July, not happening at this at this time. With these numbers on the forecast scale, we're just not seeing anything out there in the way of any cool downs coming our direction. Wish that was the case, but we've pretty much entered into those summer doldrums to where everything is the same around here, more or less, all the way through about the end of September, early October. So not really much is going to be changing anytime soon. We'll keep our eyes on this. And as we go that far into the forecast. Keep it tuned to the weather experts, and we'll keep you updated on weather overtime and other things as well. Thanks to everybody for some great pictures out there. Just a sampling from some of our morning shots that we got. Louis Haska taking Skip the pup out to work, and he wants to know who left the furnace on. Skip kind of looks like me before I've had my morning coffee, so thank you, Mr. Haskett, for a nice view of Skip the weather pup there. Nice sunrise from Jackson, Tennessee earlier this week. Thank you to Jesse Kiesler for sending in a bright view of some cloud cover out there throughout the afternoon and evening hours. And thanks to the Peel Law Firm wanting to know how you can stay hydrated when your iced tea melts. Well, first of all, I would get a lot more ice to take along with you. Secondly, I would switch to root beer, but that's just me personally. And thirdly, I don't know if that's just the camera angle or if that's the cup itself, but it kind of looks like, doesn't it kind of look like this thing is kind of listing just a little bit, so maybe you need to get a uh, thermal proof container to make certain this thing doesn't slouch a little bit. Now that may be, again, the camera angle, but I'm thinking maybe if it's that hot out there to melt your cup and your ice, maybe it's time to get back indoors again. So thanks to the Peel Law Firm for that one. If you've got pictures out there across the Mid-South, weather semi-weather related. We'll take those to Aonic underscore WREG3 on Twitter, Gesundheit, and also again on numerous other social media networks out there. Again, it's in the blue bar at the bottom of your screen, scrolling on by there if you'd like to see what's going on there. Tropical air in place across much of the area and so far across the tropics itself. The Gulf back into around portions of the Caribbean and the western Atlantic. We really have little, if anything, going on for tonight, and there's a very good reason for that. We're not seeing a lot of development thanks to some cooler waters in the Atlantic, but also something that's been taking place out there well over about a hemisphere away from us. So far, the National Hurricane Center not showing any development for the next two to five days. That's great news. Again, we'll start to see some ramping up of activity as we get into July. But this is kind of neat to take a look at here. This is a view of planet Earth as from Earth.nullschool. Net. We're going to feature this again at WREG.com slash weather. What you're looking at here as we zoom in, whoops, wrong direction, for just a little bit. And if you take a look way over here, you've got Africa and the Sahara Desert. Dust from the Sahara Desert is being tracked. And this is what can affect a lot of hurricane season. The yellow that you see right here is dust coming in from off the Sahara across the Atlantic into the Caribbean and is actually making its way, whoops, hang on a second, didn't mean to put that up there, right on up to around portions of Texas, the Gulf Coast states, and into and around portions of the area 
here around close to the Mid-South. So some of that dust from the Sahara is actually making its way to the United States. Now that dust does a very good job of filtering out a lot of the sunshine and that kind of squashes anything in the way of hurricane development. So thanks to the dust from the desert, we're actually seeing less in the way of hurricane development out there. So that's definitely good news. How long that lasts, we'll have to wait and see. We still have a lot of hurricane season to get through. So we'll be watching that, of course, with a lot of interest out there. Questions, concerns, ideas, anything you'd like to see on here, let me know. Drop me a line again at austin.onic at wreg.com. You can contact all of us at the weather office here at wreg.com slash weather. And of course, we'll have more coming up on an update later on tonight. I'll have a little bit more about the forecast. Kristen Holloway will have all the day's news and join our brand new sports anchor, Megan Rice, as she has a wrap up of another busy day in sports. And that'll be tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. Thanks a lot to everybody for joining us. Thanks a lot to everybody for all the reports out there for tonight. Stay cool. Keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for updates on air and online, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks for joining us for tonight's edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime, and keep it tuned to News Channel 3 throughout the course of the rest of the weekend.